Want to blow the narcissist's mind from a place of strength and integrity? 10 things you can do to flip the script on the emotionally abusive narcissist in your life? You don't want to miss this. Let's do it. friends, Tammy M. Joyce here, Empowerment Life Coach, creator of the Freedom Class and the Ascension Class. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. Please take a second to say hello and introduce yourself in the comments section below. And if you're back, of course, welcome back. Thanks for showing up and for tuning in. Either way, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss a new video. So let's get into it. 10 things you can do to flip the script on the emotionally abusive narcissist in your life. Number one, Refuse to be an enabler. That's right. Whether it be enabling the destructive narcissist or anyone else in their sick little entourage, refuse to be complicit in the toxicity, the gaslighting, and the outright abuse by absolutely refusing to play the role of enabler for them. And for the record, that means refusing to engage in the toxic gossip and the ripping to shreds of whoever happens to not be in the room. Refuse to so much as sit back and listen to the negative narrative. That, in all likelihood, has little, if anything, to do with the truth. If your goal is to flip the script and blow the narcissist's mind, have personal integrity. Don't be that person sitting idly by with their mouth shut, staring at their shoes or the ceiling, too cowardly to speak up about what's actually going on for fear that you might rock the boat. Don't kid yourself. Your silence makes you complicit. So either say something or opt out entirely and let your absence and outright refusal to participate speak for itself. And for God's sake, stop enabling the narcissist by making all manner of excuses for their destructive behavior while they continue to hurt others needlessly and without consequence. Instead, blow the narcissist's mind by learning to stand up, speak up, hold the standard, and set a freaking boundary already. Giving the narcissist a pass because they had such a difficult childhood or they don't have anyone in their life doesn't make you a kind, loving, decent person. It makes you a champion codependent and a toxic enabler of all manner of abuse. Plenty of us have had terribly painful childhoods and we're not out there lying about others hurting others, and working overtime to sabotage the lives or the relationships that people might otherwise be able to enjoy if it weren't for the narcissist's interference and all the ways they're protected and propped up and, you guessed it, enabled by their highly codependent and enabling little entourage. So stop with the moral high ground nonsense thinking this somehow makes you a good person while you're making excuses for a toxic gossip or outright bully. You're not fooling anyone. Not anyone with even a moderate level of emotional intelligence anyway. We had an experience earlier this year where some champion enablers were trying to blame a terribly hurtful, completely unnecessary, not to mention absolutely ludicrous narcissistic incident on the onset of dementia. Now, this was said quite literally the day after one of the enablers told me straight out that the narcissist in question had been lying about others in this incredibly cruel and vile fashion for the whole of the enabler's entire life. So clearly dementia has nothing to do with it. It is fully and fundamentally who the narcissist is, period, who they've always been. So why are we suddenly blaming it on dementia? Like so much of the gaslighting going on these days, it only makes sense if you don't think about it. So muster the decency to blow the narcissist's mind and stop. Stop enabling toxic liars, emotional bullies, and all manner of destructive narcissism by calling it something it isn't. It's lying, period. It's perception manipulation, period. It's sabotage, jealousy, mean-spirited and cruel. And it's deeply hurtful. It's abuse, period. Next, if you want to flip the script and blow the narcissist's mind, treat them with indifference. Treating a destructive narcissist to a healthy dose of indifference is the fastest way to turn the tables. Although deeply insecure to their core, narcissists have enormous egos. They also feel entitled to treat others with unprovoked and unwarranted contempt and disdain. So when the tables turn and they're the one being treated with absolute indifference, 
They're often completely mystified as well as destabilized. In their distorted perception of reality, they feel absolutely entitled to treat others however they like. But the moment they realize their existence means nothing to you, you're completely and utterly indifferent to their presence, their antics, or whatever it is they believe they have to offer, it knocks them off balance and flips the script. Which brings me to my next point, number three. When faced with the narcissist antics, your goal should always be to remain completely non-reactive. If you want to remain empowered and turn the tables on the narcissist, whatever you do, do not react. And what I mean by this is, refuse to acknowledge their attempts to provoke you, to hook your attention, and inspire an emotional reaction from you. Narcissists need emotional intensity. They need drama and chaos in order to feel alive. They quite literally feed off of your emotional reactivity, which is why they go out of their way to trigger it. Because in their sick mind, this is how they prove to themselves just how special, superior, and important they are. Without your emotional reactivity, they're actually reminded of the opposite. And they don't like that. So, when you refuse to react, when you refuse to get into the ring with them, to roll around in the mud with them, the result of this kind of detached self-control, emotional intelligence, and maturity on your part is precisely how the narcissist learns the extent to which they're powerless over you. And nothing will drive a narcissist crazy faster than realizing that they are fully and completely powerless over you powerless to affect you, to manipulate you, to control you. Completely and utterly powerless. This is a beautiful thing. Number four, being brutally honest. Narcissists are highly manipulative and have a very fragile sense of self. When you stop telling them what they want to hear and instead start telling them what they need to hear or what no one else has the courage to say, when you hit them right between the eyes with the cold hard truth, you will absolutely blow their mind. The truth has a vibrational frequency 1,000 times more powerful than any lie ever will. That's why the truth wins every time. Now, maybe not immediately, but in the end, it always does. You can count on it. And those of us who have the ability to live our lives aligned with our personal integrity, our truth, well, our presence alone can be very disruptive as well as disturbing to the destructive narcissist. We don't even have to open our mouths. They can't quite put their finger on it, but something about us makes them very uncomfortable. Maybe not consciously, but on some level, they sense that frequency and they don't like it. Why? Because it threatens to expose their true nature and all the lies they live by. And naturally, they don't like that. So learn to use radical honesty to your advantage. Narcissists are so comfortable with lies and deception that this level of honesty and integrity is completely foreign to them, which is why they squirm in the presence of pure truth. It's anathema to them. Now comment below and let me know whether or not you're finding value in this video. Let me know in the comments section below. Also, if you'd like to learn more about the possibility of working with me in one of my coaching programs, there's a link in the description below this video where you can apply to see if you qualify for a free one-on-one -on -one consultation with either myself or a member of my team. In addition, there's also a brand new free gift section in the description below this video as well. So be sure to avail yourself of that. Number five, refuse to take the bait by refusing to engage or fight back. As I said earlier, narcissists need intensity, chaos, and drama in order to feel alive, significant, and important. They quite literally require a target, someone to project all of their deeply buried self-loathing, guilt, and shame onto. When you don't take the bait, when you refuse to engage, when you refuse to fight back, when all of their chaos, drama, hurtful criticism, and personal attacks are coming at you, when they're projecting their own relationship crimes all over you, and all of it is met with a complete blank stare, their stuff literally has nowhere to land. They quite literally cannot unburden themselves at your expense. And to be clear, narcissistic people bait and provoke you because they need to unburden themselves from the heavy emotional load they carry, subconscious as that may load may be. So when you refuse to take the bait, 
When you refuse to get into the ring with them, to roll around in the mud with them, when you refuse to engage or fight back whatsoever, their stuff, that heavy load and burden they carry, that they're trying to dump all over you, it has nowhere to land. And again, suddenly, by virtue of your refusal to take the bait, the narcissist realizes the extent to which they are powerless over you. And nothing will drive a narcissist bananas faster than realizing they are powerless over you. Number six, ignore them. Give them zero attention. Meaning, do not return phone calls, do not respond to text messages, ignore their emails, give them nothing. Absolute radio silence. This is how you starve a narcissist to death and blow their minds in the process. And if you can't ignore them entirely for any reason, then ignoring them is often no more complicated than not taking anything they do or say seriously. In other words, it's clear that they have zero credibility with you because you fully have a whatever attitude where they're concerned. You don't so much as bat an eyelash in response to their stuff, their nonsense, their chaos, their drama, their idle threats, or the mud that they're slinging. And in doing so, you're fundamentally highlighting the fact that you're dealing with an entitled emotional toddler in an adult's body who is suffering from egotistical delusions of grandeur. They know it and you know it. And by ignoring their grandiose stories and all the virtue signaling that they do all day long, their ego takes a huge hit. They aren't succeeding in manipulating and controlling you or your perception, and they lose. And they certainly don't like that. Number seven, exposure. The threat of exposure, real exposure, is terrifying for a destructive narcissist. And this actually isn't hard to do. All you have to do is put them on the spot in front of others. Now, admittedly, this might take some strength and courage on your part that you're still in the process of developing. But assuming you're safe and you're feeling strong and relatively bulletproof, putting the narcissist on the hot seat can be very effective. For example, you can easily do this by exposing their toxic gossip for what it is. When they start on that track, simply say something like, yeah, that's none of my business, or that sounds like a personal problem. Maybe you should keep that to yourself. And then not another word. You've highlighted their shitty behavior for what it is. There's nothing more to say. Other options could be exposing their obvious incompetence, the extent to which they exaggerate, or calling them out when they're being passive aggressive. Like, for example, did you just roll your eyes at me? Interesting. Good to know. And then not another word. No matter what they say, keep your cool and keep quiet. You've shone a light of truth onto the scene. And again, there's nothing more to say. Number eight, unfavorable comparisons. No one suffers from a toxic and unhealthy competitive nature more than a person with a destructive narcissist personality pattern. Life for them is a constant and nonstop, never-ending competition in which they must come out on top or win at all costs. And they're not above competing with their own children, stepchildren, nieces, or nephews, in particular, which everyone happens to have been cast as the family scapegoat. And they'll do this in a desperate attempt to shore up their fragile sense of self and the false image they work so hard to convince you is the truth of who they are. To a narcissist, their value and self-worth are directly tied to external factors, such as physical appearance, social status, authority, possessions, who they know, what they or their partner or their offspring do for a living. And this so-called self-worth is fragile at best because it's dependent on, again, external factors and a competitive perspective. Meaning the narcissist can only feel good about themselves when they compare themselves to others and feel superior as a result. And they have a really difficult time coping when they come up short and are seen as inferior in some way. So all you have to do is shine a light on the unfavorable comparison and then sit back and let the narcissist do the rest. Remember, a fundamental narcissistic trait is viewing themselves as superior, above others, and therefore entitled to special treatment, special privileges, and special favor as a result. When reality contradicts their delusional view of themselves, and you shine a light on that reality, well, needless to say, the narcissist is going to be none too happy about it. And on that note, number nine, be happy. Yes, you. 
If you really want to flip the script with a destructive narcissist and blow their ever love and mind, the absolute best way to do that is to start building and creating your best life so you can be your happiest self. Seriously. If you want to flip the script on any narcissist in your life, find a way to become the happiest person you know, legitimately, genuinely, authentically happy, really happy and at peace. Make the decision to start living your best life as your best self, whatever you have to do to get there and let the narcissist eat their heart out when you do. I promise you they will. What many people don't realize is that happiness is a choice and you can choose it. Now, admittedly, this may take some work on your part, especially if you've been narcissistically abused and you have yet to begin your own personal healing and recovery work. But I promise you this, if you take the focus off of the narcissist and instead pour all of your time, energy, attention, and resources into focusing on your own healing and recovery journey, you can become the happiest, healthiest person you know. Now, how do I know? Because I've done it and I help others do it every day. And here's what I know for sure. When you're busy living a really good life, when you're genuinely happy, productive, thriving, feeling good, doing well, minding your own business, just doing your thing, and the narcissist can see, even from a distance, just how good the life you're living has become without them in it, they know you're not the least bit curious about them, what they've got going on, what they're up to, or who they're doing it with, because you're just too happy to even notice or care for that matter, that more than anything will blow the narcissist's mind. And last but not least, number 10, establish and maintain no contact. When you establish and maintain no contact with someone with a destructive narcissist personality pattern, especially over the long term, what you're really demonstrating is that you've given up on them entirely. You've closed the door and walked away for good. This is not a negotiation and it's definitely not a game. It's absolute and complete detachment on every level. It's absolute and complete disinterest on every level. The message you're sending is crystal clear. I couldn't care less. I love me more now and I'm not playing anymore. Zero attention, zero energy, no care, no concern, no narcissistic supply, which boils down to absolute no contact. And for the record, this doesn't make you bad, wrong, heartless, unfeeling, unloving, unkind, or any less empathic or spiritual than you might otherwise be. What it makes you is wise, happy, healthy, peaceful, and free, which are all good things. And on that note, I'm going to call it a wrap. But before I go, you should know that the Ascension class is open for enrollment. Now this is for you if you're ready and able to invest in yourself, you're ready to shift your identity, master the law of attraction, heal your relationship with money, and put a full stop end to the limiting beliefs and self-sabotaging behaviors that are holding you back and preventing you from living your best life. If you're ready to reinvent yourself from the inside out, create your dream life by design, and finally become the you that you were always meant to be, click the link in the description below this video to apply to see if you qualify for a free one-on-one -on -one consultation with either myself or a member of my team.